Samari Laney Birch. She was born October 12, 2007 at Lakewood Ranch Medical Center. When we went home, every night, I, had, I never had time to assemble a crib because I was in the process of moving. So I never took time to put the crib up knowing that that was the safer route for her to sleep at night. So every night she slept in the bed with me. I didn't think nothing of it because I thought it was fine. I wasn't a deep sleeper and I always listened for her to cry. And just one night while we were sleeping, I woke up and she was against the wall in the bed and she was not breathing. It's not worth it. The, the tragic can happen and less than 30 seconds. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, if you think that it's okay to let the baby sleep in the bed with you for an hour, it's not. It's best just to put the baby in the crib. You feed the baby, burp them, put them back in the crib. It's not worth, it's not worth a lifetime of suffering and sorrow knowing that your baby passed from a simple mistake. It's not worth it. The crib is always the best way to go. We've got the baby home, just a couple of days old, in its own safe sleeping environment, and we think that everything is just perfect. So let's take a look at what we've got here in our bassinet that may be unsafe for our newborn baby coming home. First of all, we've got a blanket. The baby really doesn't need a blanket. All the baby needs is warm enough clothing to, uh, to keep it comfortable in the temperature that you have set for the room. We have another issue. We have the baby face down. Babies sleep best and safest on their back, so we need to put this baby on its back. But look what else. Most parents think that the baby needs to be really comfortable on a pillow. We have an adult sized pillow in this bassinet that's extremely dangerous and can become suffocating material for an infant that gets face down into that material. So I'm gonna remove this pillow. And again, remember the baby sleeps safest on its back in clothing that's comfortable for the temperature of the room. So no blanket no pillow, flat firm mattress, and the baby dressed warmly enough for the temperature of the room. So now baby's in its own safe sleep environment and it's the two o'clock feeding time in the morning. So mom is sleeping in bed as we have candy uh, over here in bed. So the baby cries, wakes her up. She's going to be feeding this baby at two o'clock in the morning. Now perhaps she's breastfeeding or bottle feeding, but she thinks I've got the bassinet right here in the bed with me. I'm just gonna bring Junior in here to the bed to feed and then burp. And she's very, very tired because remember, babies feed every couple of hours, so she hasn't gotten a whole lot of sleep. And so what might happen, and what we have seen happen a great many times, is that the mom will stay with the baby in the bed. Now, as you can see, this bed offers a number of unsafe situations. It's got a lot of pillows. It's got a very confined sleeping area. And mom might even be worried that if the baby is close to the edge of the bed, um, that she might then put the baby close to the wall. So Candy, why don't you go ahead and transfer this baby um, as if you were gonna sleep with this baby. And now look at what we've got. We've got, if mom falls asleep, all she has to end up doing is rolling slightly over and she could actually overlay this baby and create a suffocating environment or all of these blankets can get entangled, the baby can get tangled up in these blankets. And if we'll also notice that we have an area between the bed and the wall, and we have seen many babies get turned and actually suffocate face down, be wedged between the bed and the wall. We've had several of that, those tragic incidences occur. So this, this bed is, is, might be comfortable for the mom, uh, but it is certainly an unsafe sleeping environment for this baby. When mom is done feeding at the two o'clock in the morning feeding time, after she burps the baby, she needs to take this baby, place this baby on its back, back in its safe sleeping environment all by itself, and then mom go back to sleep and rest quietly and comfortably until the baby awakens her for the next feeding. And the baby's gonna be safe, mom is gonna sleep a lot more comfortably, baby's still in the room, she can hear the baby, she can uh, attend to the baby if she needs to because the baby's right here in the room with her, but they have their own separate sleep surfaces that they, sh that they do not share. As we just described the dangerous sleep environments that we can have in the bassinet and the adult bed, we've now moved into the living room and we're gonna talk about another very unsafe sleep environment for your baby 
on the couch when you may be laying down to take a nap. As you can see, Katie is laying down with her baby and she may fall sound, uh, soundly asleep on the couch. And then as most people are wont to do while they're sleeping, they will move and turn as they're sleeping. And we've had several tragic incidences where babies have become wedged between the back of the couch and the parent during a sleep environment similar to this. We've talked about several unsafe sleep environments that have had tragic consequences here in Manatee County where babies have actually suffocated, and these are all preventable. Just take a few minutes to think about the unsafe environment that you could be placing your child to sleep in, whether you're sharing a sleep surface or putting your baby to bed in a crib or a bassinet. If you have any questions or concerns about a healthy sleep environment for your baby, contact your Healthy Start Care Coordinator.